Alright, what's up everybody? This is Generation Urge! <laughs> Today we have an awesome guest. We got Corey Vickers in the house. Corey Vickers was wholesaling through college. After college, when he graduated from BSU, he got a he didn't get a full-time job. He went straight into real estate, which is awesome. So he started, kept the wholesaling business moving, had a bunch of VAs, had a bunch of employees, and now he's actually pivoted his business a little bit, and we'll get into this, yeah. pivoted into buying rentals and keeping them, so switching from wholesaling to buying rentals, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about himself, how he got started. Before he gets to it, let's thank Peak Property Management for having us in this place. In this beautiful <laughs> office. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and then also don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button and share. Hit that bell. And if you have any comments, feel free to put them under put them in a YouTube video or reach out to us through Instagram or whatever. <laughs> so So Corey, first off, and you've also done a little bit of coaching here and there too, which is pretty cool too. So first off, can you explain like how you got it into the real estate wholesaling business at first? Um, a little bit about that, how you kind of scaled that a little bit, because I remember you had a lot of deals under contract, whether it be partnerships with other people or do, you know, marketing your own leads by yourself, and then why, why and how you pivoted to just buying rentals and who you got the advice from and whatever um, people you're listening to, to kind of change your mindset from wholesaling as a job and just making an active income and then switching to passive income. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, well, first, thank you. Uh, for inviting me on the show here, you know, um, I have a lot of respect for everyone here. I watch you guys' journey on the internet, buying rental properties, flipping, holding, Northside, Chesterfield, Petersburg, and uh, seeing you guys grow over the past few years and uh, putting on a you know event like this or just having a podcast like this. I know it helps a lot of people in our market here in Richmond mm -hmm. be able to grow. Uh, for me, it started as a college student. Um, you know, my mom wanted me to go to college. I played football, so I was a quarterback. Once I got out there, I knew I wasn't going to the NFL, so I was like, I got to figure out how can I graduate. And you know, at least produce income, right? A lot of football players are like Corey, you gotta find out how to make money while you're in school the best that you can. Because when you get out, these bills are insane. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'm gonna make sure I focus on that. So um, I spent the summer doing an internship at Liberty Mutual in Glen Allen. I was driving um, from Petersburg to Glen Allen every day, and I looked around at Petersburg and I was like, man, there's so many distressed properties, so many people that need help that you know look like me as well. What can I do to try to find out how to make this place better? You know, I'm originally from Long Island, New York, so, you know, mm -hmm. it's a pretty nice place, suburban uh, area. So it started, um, you know, driving for dollars, doing the research, looking at YouTube videos on how can I get involved in real estate with not a lot of money. I didn't come from a background of fixing and flipping. No one in my family does anything like that. So Nothing uh, in real estate. No, nothing in real estate. Family, uncle, uncle, nothing. No uh, one does nobody. anything about oh, in real estate. So uh, I had no idea. I sold a realtor uh, play or lane or opportunity. And yeah. when I went down to the office on the boulevard, it was like $2,500. And I was like, man. I don't have $2,500, I don't know how that's gonna work, so I gotta find another way. So I started doing the Craigslist, um, I looked at a property on Facebook, I remember I was sitting at my job, I was working at um, Etrick Apartments, uh, so I was working a job in school, working in Food Line as well, right in South Chesterfield, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to make ends meet, right? And um, I called the lead, I remember I left, and, and you know, I met Dow at the property, I had a contractor with me, because I was like, I had no idea how, to, how much it's gonna cost to fix. Uh, it was literally two blocks away from my college, I met Daryl out there with his partner Steve, um, you know, and he gave me a price. I believe it was fifteen thousand. We agreed to. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so you so wait, so you found a property on Facebook Marketplace. We had Daryl under... was selling it. Yeah, Daryl so had, had it under contract. Yeah. <laughs> and I, we were putting it on so there. So Daryl was wholesaling. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was wholesaling. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, literally, literally yeah. the first deal I found it on Craigslist. <laughs> I met Daryl out there. It was a cold day. It was around yeah. before his birthday, so maybe around December, December January. Um, yeah. and we went out there. We came to agreement at fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, fifteen thousand dollars, and I believe that uh, we ended up selling it for $18,000 on Facebook. Yeah. And at that moment, I remember I was in my college um, cafeteria and I was like, oh my God, they're going to pay me $3,000 for this? I worked a job, <laughs> oh. made $18,000. So you were yeah. going to sign his yeah. wholesale? Okay, I signed so it. You so were JV. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, JV, that was my first deal ever. Question, did he know you were wholesaling his deal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. the cool well, thing is when we did it out there, we didn't have any traction for the first week. Yeah. And then Corey hit us up, and we're like, all right, yeah, we'd be open if you wow. could joint venture. Yeah. Like, as long as we get our 15, we yeah. don't care. Yeah. Yeah. And sure yeah. enough, he yeah. sold it for 18. And then... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for some of you guys wondering, the, the whole property in Petersburg was costing 18. That wasn't an assignment fee or anything. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. like what the property <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah. Less than a Toyota. So, <laughs> hey, we got it under contract for five grand. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Five grand. Five grand. Yeah. Yeah. And then the deal closes, right? And yeah. then the seller, she calls me. <laughs> Yeah. Out there, they had their whole family outside upset because the buyer that I sold the deal to went in there and, and put everything in the dumpster. So yeah. it was scary too at that oh, moment. At oh, the end of the deal, was, that's they went, it was like yeah. 10 or 15 guys. They were ready to, to go down. Light oh, it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was calling Daryl and Steve. Yeah. Like, oh, and they ghosted you. Like, Cor, get they out ghosted you. Go home. I was like, go. <laughs> So on that story, how did so you got it under contract from Daryl, who got under contract from the buyer? How did you find uh, from, the seller. Uh, from, from the seller. seller? How did you find a buyer? So I found a buyer um, on Facebook, on Facebook Marketplace, oh, okay. like Google as well in Richmond. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Page yeah. Where, um, you know, version two. Yeah, version two. Yeah, version two, <laughs> yeah, version two version three, so I put it on there. And that was my first deal, three thousand dollars, and I was I was shocked. And I was so happy because again I was working a job making eighteen dollars an hour. I made a thousand dollars every two weeks for a whole month of work. So <laughs> yeah, you yeah, one yeah, deal, yeah. It was it was like game changer. Yeah, so game from changer. that point, yeah. the light was on, yeah. and you were like, "I'm gonna do this. That's I'm gonna do this. Let's go. I'm gonna do it on my own." Yeah. So all right. So um, there's a little bit of a right mind. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little bit of a mindset <laughs> thing that I that I kind of want to ask you because I did a little bit of research and I, I I heard some of your story, and like it it sounds like. There was no, how do I put this? So usually successful people have like one of three things. And what the, the third thing is that they're, they're usually missing something that most people have, which is a switch to turn off. Yeah. You don't have that switch. So you, yeah. you're missing that switch of like, there's a barrier, so I can't do it, so mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off. You don't have that. Like you, you've always persevered, yeah. right? So like what, because even through this, like you jumped into La Pulga, like, how did you even find that, right? <laughs> right. Like, how did you even think, yeah. sure, I'm sure you did a bunch of research, but you found a way to JV with him and still make three grand. Like, you st you always just look at it as like, I can do it, I'm just going to figure out a way, and you just did it, right? And then, f and then stumbled your way into success. It's not by accident. So, like, is there is, is there something that you attribute to that, like, mindset or that success to? Yeah, well, you know, the success part and the mindset... Um... Well, one, I will say in my generation with social media, one positive thing is social media will show you that it's possible, yes. right? Um, at that time, you're consistently seeing people close deals every single week. You're like, oh, yeah. it's possible. I can do this. Uh, but the mindset of it is really just, um, you know, willing that into existence and knowing that it's possible and then putting yourself in that position to actually go out there and execute is very important and getting that information that you need as well. Um, because the gap from, you know, us now and someone that's, you know, watching that wants to buy rentals, wants to do flips, wants to have beautiful homes on the north side and all throughout Richmond is that gap in information. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So being able to execute it and get that information I needed uh, was what, you know, helped attribute to that success as well. And as soon as I got that money from maybe my first two clothes, I went and got a mentor for five grand for six months to learn even more about You just poured it right back into yeah, yourself. Right back into so you, you went out and yeah. you got a mentor. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that. They, they don't understand don't, yeah. that success is not just making money. It's pouring yeah. it back into you learning more yeah. to be even more successful. For sure. I mean, these high earners that are doing hundred million or hundred thousand dollars a month in wholesales, they pour it into education. Yeah, yeah. They don't just go in, put it in their pocket, and go to buy the next yeah. deal. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, um, how? So, for people that are in your situation that want to <clears throat> do what you did, how'd you find the mentor? for five thousand dollars so with that just using the internet instagram right uh and looking for real estate investors with receipts <laughs> right people that can consistently show deals closing show their team you know yeah. show marketing give tactical tips uh was the way that i went about that and then of course going to your local ria meetings mm -hmm. uh, you know going to the petersburg ria i mean i met daryl there as well yeah um so i think i probably brought you there yeah after yeah, we yeah, did our first sure, deal yeah, i was, was like Dude, yeah I'm it was here, after man. my first deal as well so <laughs> wow. Um, you know, being able to get education from local investors to learn more about your market because it's different everywhere. Uh, yeah. So learning, you know, those areas in, in Richmond and Petersburg where, you know, people are looking to pay that top dollar as well. Wow. And uh, back to the story, did you know Daryl was wholesaling the property or did you think he was the owner when you I thought it? he was the owner. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 oh so you thought you were wholesaling. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, You're oh, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and there's the owner, they don't want to fix it. It seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Let's do this thing. Yeah. And then wow. we turned in a JV. Once he had a buyer, we did a JV agreement and set yeah. it up. And we did two or three yeah, deals two, almost back street. to back yeah. on that street yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And I remember them talking about they wanted to flip, yeah. they wanted to get into rentals. They were talking about private money. And I, I yes. had no idea what that meant, how to raise money, how any of that worked. But I remember yeah. uh, Stephen, you early on in the business talked about you know buying rentals and yeah. flipping as well, that that was your end goal. So, yeah. you know, seeing And to take it back. 
That was our first deal, too. It was? <laughs> that was our very first deal. <laughs> so you probably thought Corey was the buyer. <laughs> we, we had no idea of what we were doing at that point. Literally, that was our first deal, and his first deal was the same deal. <laughs> yeah, birds of a feather flock together, man. I mean, like, honestly. Like, I met I met Stephen Glover, like, early, early on. My, in my, it, like, yeah. even before I even moved to Richmond, I like, like, reached out to him. Before I even moved to Richmond, I reached out to this guy, and we yeah. had like lunch at, at <laughs> yeah, or breakfast brunch. at yeah. some brunch wow. spot. Yeah. Yeah. You at and then like, like yeah. and then everybody's just kind of like on their way up still. So that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so you got three grand, and then you were like, "This is what I'm doing. I'm a this." So you were still working your other job. Yeah, we were still working. You had, you had school. At... You had a job, and you were wholesaling. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, right, right. Right. I mean, and then you did another two deals yeah, after another that two with deals, them. Right, and I was yeah. still listening to podcasts as well. That was another thing that made me choose that particular mentor was I was listening to their wholesale podcast every single day. So that yeah. gave me the encouragement and the enlightenment to be able to keep going forward with it as well. Yeah. Do you mind sharing the mentor he is? Yeah, Chris Bruce. So I, uh, I think his Instagram name is the, the Detroit Mobile okay. on Instagram. So he was teaching nice. virtual wholesaling back in 2019. So I was like, okay, virtual assistants, VAs, I can make offers over the phone. And that's what led me down the wholesale path the last three years. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's sweet. So uh, back to, so you were, you decided when after you wholesaled a deal, you still have the two jobs. When did you decide to quit that? And when did you decide to go full-time into wholesaling? And wow, so no, great question. So from there, my whole mindset was, okay, well, what do I need to do by the, I had set a goal, right? It was a cash on hand goal and an income goal of where I want to be at by the time graduation comes around mm-hmm. in 2020. Uh, so the next year I did an internship with Altria here in Richmond uh, because I wanted to stay in Richmond, learn more about the market. And you know, if I had to do corporate America for a few years, to build, to keep building. So, mm-hmm. uh, from you were there, in business school, right? Yeah, I was in business school. Okay. You were yeah. business school. So I got an internship with Altria. I was working the summer job, doing the sales, territory sales, and I was still building, still learning, still investing. And then what happened was COVID happened, so we got sent home early. But I had did a package deal where I sold five deals on the south side um, to an investor. So I made twenty grand in January of twenty twenty. Then COVID happened in March. And then I actually moved into a house with two other wholesalers, and I lived in a house with them for about oh, really? five months. We lived together, and <laughs> oh, it felt like we were like training kids. We were yeah. doing offers, like training. We were working out. We were like really leveled like, up. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Yeah. We we grinded literally for four or five months. We did over six figures in three months just wholesaling houses. Damn, yeah. Yeah. between you three. So yeah. so you would get it under contract, and then they could also assign. Yeah, it well, they would get it under contract, and we would we would just work it together as a team for about yeah about four or five months. Yeah. And then by July of 2020, that's when I moved down to Manchester and then just kept building from there and worked on the owns. Wow. Were you still partnering with them when you moved out? Or no, so at that point, some... we, just, we just worked it all together and made as much money as possible <clears throat> yeah, yeah. and kind of went our own ways. Yeah. It was like a, like a training, like a training camp. We just wow. did wholesaling. Yeah. Are, they, are they still actively wholesaling? Yeah, for sure. They moved out of state, though. Yeah, 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 they're still wholesaling. They're my age. Oh, are, they in, oh, house, yeah. Yeah. are they in Texas? Yeah, are they in Texas? Yeah, when I went into the house, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, when I went into the house, like our age, at 22 years old, seeing people yeah. at 20, 30K wholesale fees, yeah, yeah, oh, let's go. Yeah, so yeah, we just yeah. locked in for four or five months, and I learned, got better on the phones, you know, better on my systems, the VAs, learning more about the integration side with the wholesaling uh, as well. Yeah. All right. Would Would you say that you brought in any skills that translated really easily over to wholesaling, or did you have to learn a lot of skills? You knew the opportunity was there, but you were like, all right, but you were, you were doing tactical sales for all trade and all yeah. them, right? But like. Were there skills that you had to learn, hard skills that you had to learn to become a wholesaler, or do you feel like you already had some of those skills? I would sets? say the soft skills I had to learn more of, right? Being able to slow down the phones a little bit, not be so aggressive on the mm-hmm. phones, not come off, you know, with that sales breath uh, was something that I did have to learn. Uh, we, you know, I've invested in many other wholesale coaching programs to be able to get those skills as well. So mm-hmm. only skill that I say I would come into it uh, was, you know, like they say, the gift of gab. Uh, was only really skill I had at that point. But, um, you know, that's the only thing you really need, you know, in the early stages of wholesaling is yeah. being able to just make offers, serve people, help them, and, you know, be able to continuously market and pull good data yeah, to be yeah. able to put yourself in that position to make offers. Yeah. Wow. So then, okay, you went full-time. So s- split out from your partners, yeah. or you didn't work with them anymore. You're still cool yeah. with them, I, yeah. I assume. Um, and then how many wholesales did you do before you actually decided to keep your properties and decide, and what flipped that switch from going from wholesaling and making active income to more passive income before we get to 
did so you graduated so that was in, in between, May. Right? No, I mean, yeah. not, sorry, in 2020, you graduated. Yeah, 2020, you graduated college. You graduated college. Yeah. And at that point, you were living with the other roommates. Yes, living with the other roommates. And then at that point, you were making so much money, you were like, I'm not working for anybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working, working for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> then, then you were starting to wholesale. Yeah. All right, so then you were wholesaling, wholesaling, and then you can fill in with this question. Nice. So um, what happened was I kept selling these deals off, right? And I started looking at these ARVs, started looking at, you know, Redfin and Zillow and seeing what these properties were even selling for in the market or what, you know, they were potentially cash flowing and seeing all the wealth that was created from my inbars, which I enjoyed doing that, but wanted to also learn that part of the business as well, right? Knowing that, hey, there's a lot of money being left on the table. So to answer your question, 2020, we kept wholesaling. We had 15 deals in 2019, my first year. And then 2020, we did roughly like around 30 to 40 deals. And then 2020, at the end of 2020, I bought my first rental property, Subject 2. Mm-hmm. So we came across a seller. Um, it was actually in the Chamberlain Farms area, 23227. Really good area. Um, and he was in a situation where his equity, he didn't have enough you know, equity in the property to be able to sell it on the market. So mm-hmm. we gave him a creative solution, take over his payments. We gave him $7,000. What I did was I really wanted to work with people that can't qualify for homes. So we worked with um, you know, an end buyer that gave us 22 k down. And I created an installment agreement uh, mm-hmm. with that tenant buyer, um, and they moved in. So that was my first rental property. It was subject to 7K down, and that was in November of 2020. You put any money into that deal? No, no so money into the deal. you walked out 15K? Yeah, walked out 15K there. And, and cash flow. And cash flow, and created another note in the back end. So when he does refi, I'll make more money. The reason oh, why I did that, okay. another reason um, was because I didn't know renovations. So when I walked in the house, I was like, <laughs> I don't know who to call, Not how yet. to fix this property at all. But there's something online where they say, hey, you can sell it and still be a landlord. So yeah. that was my first you know, introduction to being a landlord was being more hands-off. Um, there's some good and bad. To me, the bad part is you do kind of give up that equity. I like being a landlord where the tenant can move out, the lease is open, I can flip. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can refi it again. You yeah. know, giving all that equity up front is great for certain deals, but a lot of deals I'd rather just take the headaches of the property manager side. But at that point in my business, I had to learn. How to do renovations yeah, yeah. But i had no idea yeah. how to turn that bathroom over or the floors <laughs> over i had no idea at all yeah, yeah. and now if the market declined you'd probably be happy you did that the right um yeah what it was a contract for deed is that what you, yeah, what you for do yeah the tenant buyer yeah because then you got to keep the property still because right. they're probably not going to close on the property that's on water right. yeah. and then you could put it out to a new tenant right. so in a, in a bull market where the market's going up it's probably less desirable for you to yeah. try and do that but if you think the yeah. market's stagnant or going down maybe do it do perfect. that yeah perfect. Perfect. yeah yeah um, and i didn't have a lot of money either at that point to even uh take come out of pocket to fix the property yeah. as well yeah. so that's why i did that on that one or didn't know the options yeah didn't know the options that's there was credit the cards thing. and things that need <laughs> yeah. to swipe borrow or borrow refinance yeah. out um so yeah that was my first rental property november 2020. Wow. So, yeah. so to summarize, you bought it subject to, put 7K down to the original seller. Right. And then, uh, what, like a month later, two months later, you were marketing it for later, yeah. at least a purchase yeah. Yeah. and asking for 22 grand down or yeah, something? Yeah, 22 down at 16 yeah, 10%. Mm-hmm. Wow. About 8% interest on the second loan. Okay, but it was like a 10% down. Um, uh, yeah, it was roughly around 10% down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 22. So they got under contract for 220. Yeah. They gave you 22 up front. Right. And then, so you made stuff on the front end, fifteen thousand, right. and you're also making cash flow every month until they refi and, and pay you off. Right. Yeah. Wow. And now, <laughs> just for just for clarity's sake, there is a service provider that is in between, where that tenant pays into the service provider, and then that service provider pays everybody else out. No, is so they just pay me directly, and then we have an amortization calculator that uh, allows okay. them right. to know where they're at with their mortgage payments. Got it, and then you pay the mortgage yeah, that, that you're due for the sub. Right. Okay. And you keep wow. it down. So he is the service provider. You are the service <laughs> provider. Okay. And he's taking his fee yeah. for cash flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. cool. So then that was 2020. Yeah. You got your yeah. first. Um, from that moment forward, you got hooked. Yeah, so from that moment forward, I'm like, okay, I came across another deal. And what happened was, you know, the, the assignment fees kept getting bigger and bigger throughout 21. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> 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 in the two months you're holding it, the market went up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was getting crazy. I was like, why are people willing to give me this much money again? Yeah. Because they're building that well. So I came across this property on the south side of Richmond. Um, and when I came across it, I, you know, I was getting huge offers. 
like 18, 25,000 assignment fees. I was like, well, let me figure out how can I actually keep this property? Yeah. Um, and then my, one of my buyers was upset. They're like, Corey, no, no, man, you shouldn't be doing it. You should just sell it, man. You don't want to be a landlord. <laughs> you don't want this business. It's bad business. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, right, I see how this is going. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, you know, after doing business with a lot of, you know, investors, a lot of, you know, people you're selling deals to, they if they're nice enough and, you know, very transparent, they'll let you know how the other side of the business works. Hey, Corey, we use private money. We close yeah. on like Daryl, right? He was sharing how that process mm. works. So from there, you know, I went and reached out to one of my end buyers um, and they actually was able to lend me the money on the property. So I mm. bought it for 70 grand at 10%. Um, so it's 583 a month. And from there, I took my own cash, 18 grand to fix it, uh, fix the property. And while the tenant was in there, it was like, um, you know, literally a drug house. <laughs> she stopped paying. Um, it was a bad house. I'm talking about a real, a lot of, um, you know, stuff that was going on in that property. Uh -huh. So we fixed it up, got the appraisal around 160. So we were able to pull out, I think it was around 30, Damn. 40 grand <laughs> wow. in that property. So from there, I was like, woo, tax free. This is amazing. And then yeah. we bought the house next door as well. And you knew that going into it. Like you knew that you were gonna, that you you had already seen the ARV. You knew where you yeah. were plugging some yeah. money. I knew the ARV was there. I'm like, hey, well, I'm gonna work with some people in the community and yeah. fix this property up to get it appraised right. And um, yeah, that was my. That's when I started getting into the private money game and started buying singles that way as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you technically bird that one, which is when you buy, rehab, rent, refinance, right. and repeat. And so you, and you buy the neighboring house. And then yeah. walk the neighboring house. <laughs> that, that's the repeat part. <laughs> So you just keep going down the street. Right, right. right. And so, the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and the cool thing with that one was uh, when we refied out, the mortgage was only like six eighty nine, and now though that area is that house literally is rented for sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. Fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. You know, three one. Two years ago, side. man. Two, Two yeah. years of this. I'm like, whoa, this is this is yeah. game changer. So, um, yeah. And was, you were making a thousand dollars every two weeks. Like a week before that, yeah. right? When you were yeah. when you were working at that yeah. job, yeah, and, and when you refied, with how much more your all in costs minus what you got from the bank when you refied, how much more did you walk away with? Roughly around thirty eight thousand. Wow, like thirty eight yeah. or forty two. A whole wow. year's worth of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whole year yeah. tax free too. Wait, yeah. so you got thirty eight thousand dollars, and you get a thousand dollars every month, yeah. and now you get a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. you get all the equity and all the principal paid, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. tax write offs, right? Yeah. <laughs> and being able to, you know. House people in that area that really need it, you know. Yeah. And there I work with a lot of, uh, you know, contractors or subcontractors, um, you know, people that work with my crew and their family members to be able to, you know, give them affordable housing as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's awesome, man. That's amazing. That's sweet. Um, anything yeah. else on? I was gonna say, once you figured out that you could do that, well, I mean, where'd you go from there? Yeah, did so you keep back going down the wholesaling road, or did you kind of? <laughs> so at that point, I, I wanted to balance it because I knew yeah, how yeah. important active income is when building a rental portfolio. Um, yeah. A lot of people that may not, um, you know, have a job or have a lot of active income, it's hard to get into rentals. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get over budget 10, 15 grand, it's nothing. So I knew that I wanted to keep getting that active income so I could keep dumping into rental properties because sure. the angle, you know, is always to be free, right? Yeah. Um, it's not money, it's, it's freedom, right? You know, to have more time with our family, friends, and, you know, work the business as well. So from there, that's when we started, you know, just buying more rental properties on the south side that made sense. You know, started getting more subject to under contract. And then, um, you know, at the end of 20, on well, the beginning of 22 this year, I had around five doors that were vacant. So I had to, um, that were, you know, private money, subject to, so I had a lot of work to do this year. So what happened from there was we bought about six or seven doors in that point. So I was like, okay, I want to get to at least 10 doors, get that stabilized before I start buying more because now I have, I'm not making much because I got to cover these other mortgages. Yeah. I have a timeline on these private money loans that I got to get fixed. So I continue to balance it uh, through partnerships and wholesaling or JV and deals. Um, so again, we started renting out properties to mental health companies because I got into the project and need a full gut. Uh, we had to re-tear the back of the house up. And uh, for now, I was like, you know what? Let me try to get as much cash flow that I possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Let's get creative. Doing, yeah, let's get creative. Because doing this much work for three fifty a month, yeah, two fifty a month, mm -hmm. not worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah. It's just not worth it at all. So from there, that's when we started getting creative. So at that point, instead of like what most people would do, just be like, then I'm just not going to do it. Right. You were like, I'm, I, yeah. what are the let's options? Yeah. No yeah. 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 That's no when the switch. switch. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. Else, yeah. I love that. I love that. I learned something new from you. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that switch. So when we got in that property, I remember I called Daryl. I was FaceTiming Daryl. I'm like, oh my God, this is my first full bet by myself. What am I doing? Yeah. This house is horrible. Like other contractors are coming in saying, and it's, you know, a lot more than I expected. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's charging me a lot more than expected as well. So 
then we ended up, you know, fixing it up, right? You know, yeah. Daryl actually was nice enough to allow me to work with some of these contractors to, to help take down these projects. So yeah. that was a blessing for sure. Cut a lot of your costs, yeah, too. Yeah, cut a lot of costs. Some of his contractors are almost charging double what my guys were charging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a life changer this year. That was yeah. 2022, for sure. So we were able to get these properties, you said, turn that switch on, <laughs> say, hey, let's reach out to some mental health companies. I yeah. know they can pay four to five hundred dollars more than the regular market. So um, I remember I talked to Dylan about that deal too, right on, near McGrand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember Dylan had sold his, and I was like, Dylan, should I sell mine? <laughs> I remember Dylan was like, No, don't sell it, keep it. I wish I would have kept mine. So I was like, I'm gonna keep it and fight through whatever comes through the project. Yeah. So you know, we ended up being a little over pot, out of budget on that one, maybe tying up twenty grand in that, but we rented out for eighteen hundred dollars to a mental health company, refinance out the mortgage is like eleven hundred. So I was like, okay, cash on cash return, it's fine, right? Some yeah. investments on your rentals are different. Some are yeah, yeah. tax free, pull out, win, right? Yeah, Some yeah. are <laughs> cash Save. on cash return, savings, right? Better than your savings account. So we started doing that, and then we, I wanted to do the Airbnb. Um, this property is actually in Fulton Hill, so it's not north side, but um, we put on Airbnb, and it just wasn't it wasn't giving the traction that we were looking for. Yeah, um, we waited a month, waited two months. I furnished it. I lived in it for a little bit to say, hey, I'm not gonna just let this house sit vacant. Yeah, I'm yeah, living yeah, in yeah, yeah, Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the beautiful thing too about buying rentals is you have so many houses that you know. You can always have a, a roof over your head as well. Switch, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is a blessing that you know I know some of us overlook sometimes. So from there, yeah. then we're like, hey, well, there's a, there's a massive medical facility here in Richmond. Yeah. There's gotta be people coming in and out. No COVID <clears throat> is a big thing, and you know these nurses are really working hard now. So uh, we put it on, you know, furnished finding, um, and furnished finding got booked in like two days, literally, for way like it could probably run for fourteen hundred dollars to two one, maybe seven hundred square feet. This thing is right now for twenty three hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Wow. $2,300. Wow. Six yeah. month contract. So, yeah, we started getting to the mental health, travel nurses, and then again, um, you know, for mayors, kept yeah. wholesaling though. We kept not to scale where we have a team and it's a lot, but we still have, you know, virtual assistants in Jamaica and India that are still pulling records, still making all yeah. but. Um, You're just keeping your finger on the pulse. Kind yeah, of. yeah, keeping the yeah. finger on the pulse. Yeah, getting, 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 getting some in. active, yeah, active money. Yeah. Your finger on the pulse for sure. Yeah. And being able to really separate accounts. Have you got? I know you guys have read like Profit First. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Being able to do that, I actually paid five grand, got into their program to learn how to manage my finance even better because. That's we're great. doing renovations and projects and marketing yeah. and income and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gets so it crazy, crazy in there. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, how much money do I have tied here, 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 here? So being able to separate those accounts yeah. really helped as well this year um, to be able to, you know, of course, pay myself as well. And realize how much you were making yeah. birth on each property, right? For, like the furnished finder versus a long term rental. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. necessary. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that would catch up. Oh, it's not real, yeah. real yeah. catch up. Yeah. So before that, um, you just had everything in one account. Just one account. I had all my mortgages, <laughs> all my marketing, all my rental income coming in there. You know the education going in there, so I knew I needed to separate things out. Wow! Yeah. So you had multiple streams of money coming in, and then also and going, going out. out. And going out, yeah. Out of one account. Yeah. What was there something that happened that made you just be like, "All right, this that got scary. Like I'm not gonna let that I, happen again." I think when you when I started looking at the amount of transactions that were in there, and I'm like, "This is a lot of adding up to be doing." in one sitting to look yeah. at my actual, you know, P and L's and yeah, starting yeah. to work with bookkeepers and just started doing research. Nothing really happened where I was like, Oh my God, things are out of hand. It was <laughs> just these are a lot of transactions and I wasn't really too good in the accounting in class. Yeah, so yeah. I knew I needed yeah. to work with some professionals to kind of separate things and, and organize my finances so yeah. I can understand where we're moving at every single month. Instead I'm of just, just looking at a savings account, like, oh we're good. But yeah, like, yeah, where yeah. are we actually <laughs> at right now? I'm sure that made also made you like sleep better at night too. Yeah. Because the money didn't change, it was just now you like it got recognized, right? Like right. now you were high, like you could see it, you know, it was yeah. all split up, and you could sleep much better at night. Right. Yeah, you well, and you could focus on kind of what was making you more money yeah. and mm -hmm. what wasn't making you as right. much money. Now let me put a little more focus on this side because yeah. education's bringing us in this, and this yeah. is bringing us in this. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. accounting is for getting for anyone getting started is super important from the beginning to try yes. and do that. That way, it builds the habits right. of how like you just see your pro. I mean, I, I, I'm a finance nerd, so I like I like looking at it. Yeah. It's fun for me. Yeah. So I, I was like say y'all two are accountants. <laughs> yeah. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like looking yeah. at the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun seeing that end number and be like, oh, I, you know, I made yeah. this yeah. much on this right, property, right, right. but this property's not doing too good. I need to make some changes or sell it or yeah. do something with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of makes you think a little bit harder on the. Properties that aren't performing, kind of like the 80-20 rule, where 20% of your properties 
make eight or eight percent of your money. Yeah, eight yeah. percent of your money. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. stuff like that. The ones that you change the AC units on. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the ones that don't. Eight percent of your problems make twenty percent of your money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that was um, all right. So that was 2020, 2021. Um, you were picking up stuff. You were still wholesaling some stuff, and you kind of amassed a certain amount of properties that you needed to like work on. Yeah. And that that led you into 2022, or was that? Yeah. So that led me into 22. 2022. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, do I take this money and and continue marketing? I got another mentorship that I joined wholesaling wise, and like, hey, Corey. You might want to relax Q1 and get your rentals in order. Yeah. Um, because at that okay. point, I had about five vacant doors, and all of them needed at least about 15 to 20 grand work. Yeah. So going into 2022, I was okay, let's get to work. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's refile. Clear this up. Let's, let's get them re ready. Let's That's go good timing. Cool that your mentor said that, too. Yes, yeah. Cause a yeah, cause lot of mentors kept... could have just been like, no, yeah. keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. they could have yeah. dragged me on because that yeah. mentor was Local like, mentor? Or... No, they were actually in Georgia. Okay. So they were a six-figure wholesaling uh, company, and I wanted to learn how to scale my wholesale business up just a little bit more. And they said, Corey, you, you got to pause in January. Let's get you, get those doors situated and That's reach cool. back out to us later on. Yeah. Okay, so then you're already done with all those five projects. Yeah, I'm done with everything, and we ended up buying a duplex um, in February time in this Tidewater area. Uh -huh. So now I'm fixing that property now. Okay, but the the five you're good now, and you just have a new duplex that yeah. you end up picking halfway through. Right. And then you started turning up the dial. How how are you how are you approaching wholesaling in 2022? Because the market's changed a lot, yeah. interest rates have changed a lot, yeah. people's buying strategy has changed a lot, people are wanting to pay less because rates and all that. Right, people aren't flipping as much. Right. So like. How did that change your strategy? Because you're in both now. You you have been in the wholesaling, and then you got into heavy into the buy and hold. So, it, in a scale, a hundred percent scale, like where are you more in the wholesaling side, so or are you more? Man, right the, now, it's it's really fifty fifty, and it's been yeah. a lot of adjustments, like you said, within the wholesale business. Um, whether you know you can't move deals for as much as you used to, right? Yeah, or yeah. sellers are still locked in at a number that just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, especially with being a wholesaler, right? We don't have that ability to, you know, take it to the market as well. We have to get it at a discounted price that makes sense for you know, our landlords and flippers. So, you know, being able to adjust now in 22, 23 um, really has been, you know, working with different kind of data, you know, whether we get it from the county records or trying new websites. And really the big thing I've been telling a lot of my students is being able to keep that pipeline full, right? As long as you can take the time to really consistently make offers every single day and you know possibly train some other people on your team as well that's really what's been keeping that going with mm -hmm. the wholesale mm -hmm. side uh, the rental side i have put a lot of time and energy into it and um we, we want to keep you know building the rental side as well and try to double that cash flow which to me i'm thinking well let's go get more mortgages to eat up that whatever that profit is on the rental side and turn it over again and then get it to that goal of cash flow so right now it's really 50 50. yeah it's really 50 50 currently uh, but but your strategy is uh, volume. Just put out as many offers as possible. Can have them continue to come in, um, so that you can try to turn whatever ends up being turned. You turn it and you sell it. Right. So, right. So you're dropping. You're you're unfortunately dropping some deals then that just aren't. Yeah. Moving. Some deals. Yeah. I mean, we had a month last month. Set, <clears throat> six deals didn't go through. Right. In wholesaling real estate, whether it was title wow. searches, buyers backing out. Um, sellers backing out, um, you know, a lot of those transactional issues that come up, you know, on the wholesale side. Wow. For sure. And this is just your team? Six, yeah, this is Six me. didn't happen? Yeah, six didn't happen, yeah. How many uh, are you doing? Holy crap. So, really, we only do about four to five deals a month, honestly. Some months, maybe two, three may close. We may lock up five, but maybe two close. So, um, yeah. but again, it's it has, when you're balancing both, you know, it's hard to keep building it. Um, you know, I have a part of my wholesale business right now um, that has helped you know, tremendously being able to continuously still doing deals, still getting properties under contract. You said a partner. Yeah, I'm a okay, partner okay. in my wholesale business right now okay. on the sales side. So we just locked up a deal yesterday in Petersburg, you know, so we're, we're active. I have a buyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a buyer too. Yeah. 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 And continuously JV in as well, yeah, um, yeah. you know, through 22, 23, using our network with other people that, you know, may have a deal that's struggling to move it or may need help trying to get on the phone with the sellers. Yeah. Just really trying to be as resourceful as possible because, the active income is very important right now, yeah, especially yeah. in the rental game because, like I said earlier, the rental game is a long-term, yeah, long money business. Yeah, you can go broke. Yeah, you can go broke. Go being in the rental game yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's that if that appraisal doesn't come back right, if you've spent too much money on it, yeah. if it's possibly not renting for as much as you need, you know, yeah, you can definitely go broke in the rental game for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. with the, not with the right guidance as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, doing all this, I know you you have an Instagram, pretty big Instagram following. Yeah. You mentioned your students a few times during yeah. this podcast. Um, when did you start getting into the education space? Are you still doing it? Are you still going hard on it? Have you like hired people for do? Because some of your videos are sweet. Huh? Are you editing those or like? Because they're, they're <laughs> yeah. pretty awesome. They're like, yeah. it makes me watch the whole thing. I'm like, I'm pulling up on Instagram. It's like, oh. And I watch like the whole two minutes, which I, I usually it. don't watch t- full two minutes of people's uh, yeah. reels yeah. and stuff. No. And um, as far as education field, do you, would you want to ever just go fully into that rather and then focus on that, assuming it could provide you enough income? Or do you still like that in real estate and doing that? Or are you done with that and are just focusing on real estate? Okay, cool. Yeah, so with the education, it started in, uh, I think it was January 2021, we started coaching and teaching, right? Um, you know, being a college student, you know, a lot of people, you know, wanting to get involved in real estate. A lot of people out there are struggling. They want to know how can you make 10, 15 grand, 30K deals, 40K deals? How are you buying rental properties? And, you know, for me personally, I never wanted to be a gatekeeper of information, right? I always wanted to share uh, to, to people in my community. So I actually started, I was working, um, doing consultant sessions for a bigger coach, um, that was teaching maybe 40 to 50 people a week easily, yeah. you know, being able to really run that education business. And he's created multiple seven figure education people that we know. And um, so from there, I was working with him doing this calls. Amazing, right? Uh, the students loved it. They were able to close deals. Many students that I've had, um, you know, are still doing deals, flipping rentals in Philadelphia, Florida. So from there, I said, well, let me try to do my own thing, right? So I actually partnered with someone on my education business because I had so many other businesses going. I said, let's partner. And, um, you know, we did field days, right? We were able to bring people, you know, that were my students and come and check out renovations, check out flips, check out rentals. But the, really the best way to structure, um, you know, the education side virtually, of course, is, you know, just having a Zoom call, right? And having pre-recorded videos where, you know, I would record the videos similar to this and go over everything A through Z. Mm-hmm. So now you have a, you know, education where you can sit there, watch, learn everything that, let's say, Carlos is teaching me. And then I have a call with Carlos once a week where Carlos actually can go over either deals with me, can go over calls with sellers with me, can go over yeah. the, his rental calculator with me, he can go over his doors with me, and mm-hmm. being able to create other successful people, right? To me, success is determined by how many lives are better off because you live. Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that, you know, even one of my students, he's, you know, 24 years old like me, 25 now, um, he closed in a triplex in Richmond, right? One of my students, right? Creating other successful people yeah. uh, is what led me into education. Uh, we've had students, whether it was my classmates, close deals in Detroit, um, in New York, in Maryland. Uh, so I do have a passion for, for education and coaching and teaching as well. So that's how I got started with education. Um, the thing I like about education, when I say that I would want to just do education, um, maybe 100 doors later from now, possibly, <laughs> right? Just be an influencer and help and teach and coach and speak across the country. But for now, you know, it's time to do business uh, right now where we're at. But, you know, I feel like, you know, all of us in this room here could have a group of people that we're cultivating and we're teaching and we're coaching that we're developing to do the same thing that we've done. Because a lot of people, you know, will look at all our portfolios and look at the things that we've done and say, man, I would pay you to teach me how to do that the fastest, yeah. quickest, most efficient way. We've been through the fire. Sure. So yeah. we can yeah. make it easier for the next person. So I, I'm very passionate about education. Uh, one thing I will say about education, for anyone out there that wants to get into it and has a skill, you have to be heavily involved in creating content for the internet, right? Because people get tired sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. They, they just scroll past it, but you have to push your, your product out there to the world. But you always attract the right people. You attract people that are just like you, yeah. that's looking for that knowledge. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of fakes and stuff. We have rental properties, right? We're actively fixing properties, so we always have something that we can show and help other people along the way while we're fixing up the duplex, right? I may have a student come and meet me at the property and and, and show them what's going on. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the education route. It's very profitable, as you guys know, right? We we know a high-level skill, but um, overall, education business is very good. You just have to want to keep pushing that content out there. Yeah, and, I mean, you're, you're a perfect example of, like, not only are you preaching it, but, like, obviously you really believe in it because you do it right you know what i'm saying like like he went out and Mm -hmm. spent five grand before i mean really five deals yeah exactly (laughs) before you can really afford it yeah but it's because you saw that the value of it yeah and did you get that from somewhere before like where did you really understand the value of of like accelerating your learning through yeah. paying a mentor. Mm. So from there, there you... Um, you know, I did network marketing for a year. I think I took that, I left out the story, but I did network marketing for a year. So the network marketing opportunities, they're so big on education, right? They're like, 
this is how you get to this level. You got to pay this. You got to pay that. And really, like I said from earlier, that gap in information, I knew that that's what separates me from the next yeah. person. Um, it's yeah. either the gap in information or that experience. Yeah. So if I don't have the experience because I don't have the time, then I got to get the information. So yeah. for me, it, it just seemed like it always worked. If I can get the information, apply it, and take action, then, it, then it'll turn that money over. Yeah. And really, yeah. it's just investing in yourself. You know, yeah. The best return is always ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right? Imagine the amount of money mm-hmm. you have tied in real estate. If you maybe tie that into your mind and had a coach that may already have a thousand dollars and you met with him once a week, you may get to a thousand dollars quicker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The way that we're doing to try to get to that first hundred. So. Yeah, because they'll change your mind frame. They'll, they'll sure. change your frame. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Because yeah. yeah. immediately it'll be something like, uh, I don't know if I can do. I mean, let, let's call you probably, you said you did between like 30 and 40 deals on one of your best years. Well, you get in a room full of people that did a hundred deals on average a year. Yeah, and you feel like a small was, guy. Yeah, and it was just like, oh, all I had to do was this thing. Right? How and big is that tank? Up. Yeah. How yeah. big is that tank? Right? Yeah. Are you the big fish in that tank, or are you the small yeah. fish yeah. in that tank? Yeah. So always looking at that tank as well, and then you know, also being connected with people and trying to exchange value first and foremost. Right? Yeah. Like me and Daryl told us like, hey, what can I do to help you? Yeah. yeah. What, you know, what can I do to help you? Or you know, then I'll try to get in there and pick their brain as well on certain things because you know what. A lot of us are just starting the business, right? Even in the rental business, I watched Dylan build his portfolio, Daryl build yeah, his portfolio, yeah. Carlos build his portfolio, and you know, you guys are the people that I will call and reach out to if I have questions, you know, on how to connect the dots. Every part of the business, for sure. Yeah, yeah. cool. And lots of, you'll you're someone who will reach out to for wholesaling purposes. I don't know that much about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. So you can still teach a lot about that too. Sure. Teach sure. us about so, that. Yeah. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, I'm trying to. I just think that that's the reason why he's successful is he surrounds himself with other successful people or people going in the same direction. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I and mean, that's, that's what they say about goldfish, right? Like goldfish will only grow as big as the bowl that they're in. Yeah. So you'll never see a big goldfish in a little, little bowl. Tank. Yeah. In a little tank. You never <laughs> will. So you're that goldfish that wow. keeps jumping into the next tank, yeah. right? And we all are. Yeah. Bigger we just, yeah. Bigger and audience. then you get bigger mm-hmm. and then you're like, yeah. okay, well, I think this is as big as I'm going to get for this tank. And you just, you pay the $5,000 to jump get to the next, next bowl. Right? Yeah. Wow. And you just yeah. keep doing that. Uh, how much money do yeah. you spend on mentorships, would you say? In your lifetime? Uh, in my lifetime of mentorships in real estate, um, I would say roughly probably $20,000, dollars 20 grand yeah. in the past yeah. two or three years, right? Every year we make sure that whether, you know, even joining local real estate um, mentorships, like Rehab Valuator, you know, mm-hmm. I joined that, I believe, in 21. So I yeah. did that as well to learn how does this rental side sure. work? How does the, the renovation side work? <laughs> you know, being able to go out in my market and see what a development deal looks like, yeah. see yeah. what new build, built to rent projects look like. And actually be able to talk and share on a Zoom call with those individuals to say what's the most important things with renovations, right? Speed, quality, yeah. cost, and and getting that game as well. So roughly around twenty grand, but that yeah. feels so little compared to like the wealth of knowledge that you right. can get. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. yeah, yeah. Twenty grand is nothing yeah, compared yeah. to the, yeah. what he's gained. I mean, it's for sure, gained you hundreds of thousands hundreds of dollars. thousands for sure. Yeah. What's uh, what's the largest assignment fee that you've gained? Largest is my question. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, largest assignment fee was thirty two thousand dollars, thirty two thousand five hundred in Churchill. How long nice. did that take you to? That turn? took me thirty days. Thirty days. No, thirty days. About a thousand dollars a day. Yeah, yeah literally, literally, <laughs> on thirty uh, first street. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he sold you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, 31, oh, cool. 32, yeah, that's, that's probably a good buy for whoever bought that. Too. Yeah, 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 great buy. They went yeah. and flipped it, put another floor in, and they made a hundred grand on that deal easily. Yeah, wow. I think it was fourteen oh eight North Thirty First Street. Wow. Everybody wants no. to on Zillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everyone go egg that. Now, throughout, the, throughout the years, what's the most assignment fees that you've collected in a, or not like dollar amount, but how many have you assigned in one month? In one month, the yeah. most was when I was in that team. I think we assigned about seven in one month. Seven and one seven month. Seven and one month. Yeah, seven. I know we awesome. had like eight, like maybe like 12 on the board, but I know seven closed. Seven you know, closed. And that was in yeah. prime time. Yeah, prime yeah, time. Yeah. That was prime time. time. <laughs> yeah. Southside yeah. was under 70 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Five grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what about a crazy story? I'm sure you've had plenty. Oh, yes. Let's let's hear about that one, uh, the first one where you found like those ladies and uh, I guess you saw a bunch of needles and stuff. Is, is yeah, there so, more to that one? Man, so that story, you know, was crazy because what happened was we got the deal, right? Um, we, we kept the tenant inside, right? We, we don't mind buying tenant occupied for the time being. We're not looking to push people out there and give them an eviction notice. If they can pay the reasonable rent, we're good. So we got the property. When I first got it, it was really my first door I was managing. 
and it was um she was renting the rooms out to other you know okay. uh, drug addicts slash um you know people that literally i would see on broad street asking yeah. for money uh -huh. literally so that was like my first rental property again maybe 10 to 15 people there every single time i was there now she oh yeah, my God. yeah so i had a meeting with her and then some of these people that we run across do have mental issues yeah so they legally have other people that are responsible to take care of them so yeah. being in that situation you know she cursed her uh, guardian out and she left so i had to take care of the tenant then she goes two years without paying <laughs> two years without paying so that was crazy of course you know one of your first rental properties they just don't pay you and you're coming yeah. out of pocket and then we um you know had to go through the eviction process we evict her and then they steal everything out so they stole the washer dryer fridge um wow. left the bathroom all you know waste in there so that was that was a crazy story for sure um some other crazy stories are like dealing with you know, nine to fourteen heirs on the property. I had a deal oh, that took yeah. that, had deal. that took two years to close wow. because the seller I was personally working with, the one that we just closed for twenty grand, you know, Mr. Ward, he was um, a Vietnam veteran. He passed away in escrow, so now all oh. the fifteen heirs that they had to clear out, and it took like almost a year and a half just to close that deal. Wow! Damn, we didn't give up on that one. Did you have to do anything extra to try and close that deal, or were you leaving it to the attorney? So to we go leave out? it to the attorney, but you know they, you know we have to keep that slow. seller and keep them in good graces because any time they can just say I'm good. You can yeah, file a memorandum, yeah, yeah. but it, that's just gonna slow the money yeah. up as well. So that was yeah. another crazy one. The one we talked about earlier with Daryl, you know, them wanted to fight and said, "Yo, my family has <laughs> guns in this house." And Daryl, I can't believe they did this. They were crying on the phone because you know yeah. you sold it and you didn't clean it out before closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was another like <laughs> crazy. No, the word, the biggest crazy story <laughs> is my first flip. My first flip of my life. I wanted to do a flip. I saw the beautiful photos on Facebook. I'm like, oh man, I want to do these to rentals. So my partner, he finds a deal, right? North Chesterfield, he locks up for forty thousand dollars on Reams Road. Yes, three thousand <laughs> square feet property for forty thousand dollars. The husband wow. passed away. Quarter house. We lock it up for forty grand. We go to a private money. It's our first time getting a private money loan. I think he lends us about one twenty. Wow. The ARV is like three thirty. Yeah. We get in the Damn. Property. Yes. And you haven't been inside yet. No, they were inside. Oh, okay. We were out there. You know, Benny yeah. helped clean the property out. He was going underneath, getting all the trash <laughs> out, helping the first floor out. So then we team up with a contractor. We go to his flips on the north side on 2nd Street. Another one he had on 4th Ave. Okay, this guy's legit. This is legit. Does he, he still knows, do business? Um, I believe that Marvin, I don't know these people, they still do business. But uh, okay. The guy that we partnered with was Marvin, and he was doing beautiful flips. So we said, let's partner up. So me, yeah. Dylan, Daryl, we get this contract. We got this flip. Let's go. Right, so the <laughs> the whole rehab budget gets wired up front. I guess they yeah. had that much trust because there's so much equity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get into the project, weeks go by, weeks go by, weeks go by. Nothing looks nothing looks different. It's the exact same. It's just cleaned out. So now everyone's getting stressed out. You know, you get into the project, the contractor's not doing what they say you're gonna do, your partner. For some reason he takes all of the rehab money out of our bank account that we all opened up together to finish his job. Pulls a full 80 out. He pulls like six, uh, I think it was like around 40 grand out. He pulled the rest that we had of the rehab budget. We spent about 20 just in gutting the property yeah. and cleaning it. Horrible, right? So now we're like, man, he took the money. This is crazy. So then what happened? We tried to get lawyered up. He agreed to get maybe five grand back and said, look, let me finish the job. Let me, let me finish the job. Yeah. He literally said that this house right here is going to be a testament of your faith if you let me finish this job. I said, dude, cancel this testament deal. testament of your faith. Yeah, yeah. So we, like, cancel this deal. Let's yeah. try to sell it on the market. So then we said, we're out of it. And then we ended up having to call realtor. John Small came by the property. He said, like, yeah. what do we need to do? The money's gone. We're all in it for this number. Yeah. Do you want to partner and flip? Like, what should we do? So we get into it. Everyone's upset. You know, our girlfriends are upset. Everyone, everyone's, just, <laughs> everyone's crying. I'm, everyone is literally crying. Like, oh my God, I can't believe this just happened to us. They took the money. So what we ended up doing was we ended up just trying to, you know, work with some realtors and sell the deal. We made a little spread, like 18 grand. But, you know, that was probably the craziest story is teaming up with a contractor who steals the rehab budget. Uh -huh. and the property that looks in bad shape. The money's gone. Uh -huh. But thank God that we got it at a wholesale price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that. you would have been wow. crazy. So you ended up Ooh. selling all the MLS. So we ended up selling off market actually. All market. Oh, we found a buyer that came in again. We got it at such deeply discounted price that we were able to sell it for more. 
So even was, while losing your even while losing money, we're calling realtors, wow. we're calling lenders, we're calling another. Hey, can you help us lend us the money? The switch is missing. And, you got resourceful. Yeah. You <laughs> had to figure it yeah, out. I appreciate. Yeah, you had to get resourceful yeah. in the situation. Yeah. So that contractor is he just off the hook with your forty grand? Yeah, he was off the hook. I mean, and you didn't he, try and get that back. No, because technically we were all a partnership, right? So we all own that entity three ways. So if he yeah. takes it, we could try to, you know, we came to agreement on what we could get back that day, really, with the lawyer. So we signed an agreement for him to pay us back, I think it was like four or five grand, because he said, oh, well, if I got to finish it and I have to do this work, just give me the profit now. I don't yeah. want to work with you guys anymore. I'm done with this deal. I don't want to work with you guys. And <laughs> took that money and said, I'll give you seven grand though. Or eight grand. So, uh, so how do you justify uh, like pulling the money out? Was yeah, there ever a justification? His justification was, you know, you guys are getting a little shaky. You guys are stressing me out. You guys are being patient. <laughs> this thing is taking a long, you know, like that was his thing. Like, I'm rushing it. How long from the time you bought it to that point was it? We probably were in that deal about six or seven months. Wow. Six or seven months. And I remember we got it. It was cold. I can't remember the month, but when we sold it, it was definitely going into the summertime for sure. Wow. Yeah, that was my oh, first foot. I thought it would have been like three months. <laughs> no, yeah, that was a that oh, was tough. Yeah, that gosh. was my craziest deal for sure. The and very it, first flip too. Yeah, what made you want to go flip another one? Oh uh, yeah. That's <laughs> so you yeah. never JV again with another uh, uh, contractor. You no, know, after that I believe that's when I worked with that was that after our flip? I think that was after our flip. Okay. That was before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was before. Before, yeah. It yeah, had before to be before. Flip. Yeah, it was before. Yeah. It was before. <laughs> so then I was like, I need to team up with the right person to do my next flip. Yeah, so yeah. me and Daryl, we went out there, we had a seller, um Daryl helped me, we locked it up. Daryl raised the money for it, and we went in there and we rehabbed it and then flipped that property. So yeah. you know, went through the you know, take a loss on that. Yeah, and yeah. Then Making sure that we team up with the right person when you guys do get out there and you start flipping and rehabbing. Yeah. Team up with someone that's done it that can show their Facebook like hundreds <laughs> of flips. You know, okay, they're they're legit. And make sure you have all your paperwork in order as well, because real estate can get real cut through. Right? Yeah. yeah, and real real estate for sure. With some of these people in whatever market you're in, so. You know, especially now, yeah. no kidding. especially yeah, now, as, as money shifted. thing, it, everything starts to dry up. Mm-hmm. Deals yeah. start to get tighter. People are going to start to lose money because I feel like That's JVs have existed before, yeah. and like there was so much upside right. that like you probably yeah. weren't going to lose money. But the moment people start losing money, people are going to start to disappear. Yeah. It gets real disappear. cold outside yeah. this yeah. time. Yeah, start disappearing, <laughs> lying on contracts. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Like, not putting you on the paperwork or yeah it, trust me trust me yeah trust i got, me. I got you, you. I, got I, got you. I got the money don't worry i got yeah. the loan yeah. i got the lenders no nah, you have to be really <laughs> careful make sure you guys are very careful in yeah. these next few years so yeah, that was some of the crazy stories and then this duplex now is crazy to me yeah you buy a duplex you get an inspection on it and now you look and you have you know floor joist issues and you put floors over top of it and then the upstairs floor joist is giving you issues so now you're in it creatively you put cash to get it yeah just because it's creative guys doesn't mean it's a deal right <laughs> yeah, it's not a real deal. Yeah. But that is oh, well, nice. ten thousand. Okay, you have to make sure you are ready for that type of yeah. renovation as well as what you want to do with that money. Yeah, and on the investment side of it. So yeah, we're a little bit over budget, but um, yeah, that was crazy to me, honestly. Yeah, walking there when the contract yeah. didn't say anything, they just wanted their money to put the floors down and be done. Put it down and call it. Hey, I don't know. You owe me three grand. <laughs> yeah, so, and that, that's oh. the that's the thing with like being, and this is something that I'm learning. It's like when being hands off, they're just task oriented, right? So they just yeah. want to do the thing that they've been told to do. They don't care about the details. Yeah. But it's just like, oh, can you paint this room for me? And there's like, you know, Steve stuff on the wall. Yeah, just like some of it needs to be fixed or just like take it off. It's like, yeah, there's no sensor. Mm. You can take this shit off the corner. Right. You yeah. know? And they don't. They're just yeah. like, Paint right over Rush around it and it's like, yes, you take it off. So the worst is when they paint around like wall receptacle place without taking oh, them off. Like, bro, <laughs> or yeah. paint the receptacle. Receptacle itself, yeah. Of like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. I think it just comes down to know what your skill is, right? What you're really gifted at, what your gift yeah. is, and yeah. working in that lane. I think that's the biggest thing I learned this year. Yeah, um, yeah. Is that, you know, I may not be the best flipper. I may not be the best landlord, right? But, you know, there may be other things within real estate that I can do that I can really excel in and be able to delegate those other things. Because to me, the, the hardest thing about real estate is picking picking what you want to do. Yes. Do you want to run a property management company like we're here? Do you want to buy a bunch of doors? Do you want to be a flipper? Do you yeah. want to be a salesperson and do deals? Do you want to be an appraiser? The list goes on. You want to be a yeah. realtor? <laughs> um, the list goes on. So you have to just pick that, that one lane and, and double down and stick to it. What's your one lane? So my one lane... Is you know as time goes on, I'm realizing more is really the sales side and the, being yeah. able to raise money as well. I've been enjoying that, being able to raise more capital to just double that money. So my lane is sales and and, and really just doubling money. Yeah. So wholesaling as well as you know like 
Yeah, it's wholesaling, obviously. Now, when you say sales, is it more like going to the seller appointments to get them under contract, or is it selling them after you're under contract? Mm, So I would say, yeah, it could be both. I would say from my skill, because I spent two, three years on the phones consistently from nine to nine every single day making offers, it would be, you know, working with sellers beforehand. So working on that side is probably my, what I'm most skillful in, but to reach my goal, I could not not learn how to renovate properties, how to refinance sure. properties, yeah, how to yeah. flip properties and not have that knowledge. Yeah. You know, and always be transactional. Yeah. 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 Always be transactional. That was one thing that I learned in many multiple mentorships is, you know, just don't base your life on transactions. Make sure you're yeah. building wealth. Yeah. Absolutely. Remember that wealth is a long term. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and you are twenty five years yeah, old. Twenty five years See, old. See, that's what's crazy 25. about this. Is at such a young age you learn yeah. this. When I was twenty five, I wasn't thinking about any of this. Yeah. I wasn't even in real estate. I yeah. was thinking about how can I make the fastest money and go spend it as fast as possible. <laughs> Literally, twenty five yeah, years old. I was, getting, boys think, yeah. I was yeah. going out and partying. And then I would make some money. Oh, shit, let's go on a vacation. Yeah, Why am yeah. I going to keep this money in my account when I can spend it? Yeah. Right, Especially right, at 25. Right. And then the people you're around as well, right? Like, I know yes. a lot of people say it's lonely on the way to the top. And to me, it's not lonely. You know, there's people around for sure. But it's lonely because I don't have people like you guys in my life that I can speak to. So now it feels lonely. Mm-hmm. I can, yes. can call down and say, Darren, I'm, I'm, I'm over budget. Or Dylan, I'm over budget. Now, you know, being able to find that community of people, yes. whether you pay for it or whether it's organic or whether you bring value by bringing deals, whichever way you do it, you know, that will help you in your journey in real estate investing. For sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've talked about that before. It's very important to get in the right circles yeah. Yeah. and you'll also lose like your older friends along the way Absolutely. that aren't doing Absolutely. what you're interested in, aren't interested in scaling themselves up, running businesses and then it kind of just happens. If you have that mindset, right. it kind of just happens. Like yeah. Daryl, Carlos, we talk a lot so it's just like, I don't want to call my old college friends as much, as, or, you know, because I don't have as much in common with them. And for one, how are you going to ask them a question about being over budget on this deal? Our <laughs> yeah. yeah. problems are different now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so somebody stole forty thousand from my account, and people are like, "Dude, I made, I made that a year." That'd be, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, 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 oh, the Patriots wall. So Tom Brady's gone. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I realized when I was talking about problems to my friends, they told me about football and sports. I'm like, yeah. Oh, they want to go into women and toxic things like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, when, it gets, I mean, that's kinda, when it gets. That's when you start down. Yeah, that's when it kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. conversation changes. So, uh, so have you lost some contact with some of your old uh, college friends? Yeah, and, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, and I would say, you know, always having an open line, right? But they sure. know, you know, as we get more mature and as we build more businesses, that the kind of conversation that we have when we talk. It's like Mike John. It's got to be there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be there. If it's not there, you're doing well. Family's good. God's great. Cool. You're good. We're gonna hang out maybe in the summer once. Okay, cool. Um, but again, now it's like I'm looking for more friends that I can build with. I can yeah, grow with. Yeah. We have common values and, and mm-hmm. things that nature. How do you how do you reconcile people saying that uh, you've changed mm-hmm. or like oh, you yeah. think you're better now and you 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 uh, you're not the old Corey that I used to know and <laughs> you've. Right. Do you get that Think a lot? Less of us. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing I will say, you know, being at homecoming this weekend, you know, or past week, it was felt like so many people came up to me, like, man, you're an inspiration, you're inspiring. So a lot of people don't have that experience. But, you know, to answer your question, of course we're going to change, right? That's, that's what we're working sure. for. We're yeah. going to change. I'm not going to be the same Corey that I was two, three years ago. Yeah. Or even just, yesterday. Or even, or even yesterday. The last yeah. Yeah, even last yeah. week, last yeah. month, right? Things change. We learn. We get new information, new knowledge. But I would always say that, hey, like, you know, my heart, it's still the same. Like, I'm still respectful. I still have love for you. I still would love to talk to you if you have any problems. But, you know, I just may not be the person to call when things are really negative and down for you. Yeah. You can call yeah. when things are good and positive, and then we can, we can build on that. Not to say I'm not there in down times, but, yeah, yeah we do change, right? That's And yeah. are you with this change of this new life? Or if not, yeah. hey, we're, we're friends forever, man. I, I'm always one call away. But, yeah, we have changed. We've all changed. I, I feel like you've, uh, you've reflected a lot from the research that I was doing. You've been reflecting a lot personally you've been looking within it been very introspective yeah, this year about yeah so this yeah. year man i spent about um so when i got into one of my doors i lived in it by myself for around yeah. seven months man so seven months no women no partying no drugs no videos inappropriate stuff like that in my mind nice. and um just cleansing yeah That's just it. cleansing for six or seven months being able to work through a lot of things because you know as we grow it's like i see so many broken men 
Yeah. It's like they may have all the money, but they're broken. And yeah, I can yeah. tell from what you're saying, it's real broken. So I wanted to go in and fix all that stuff. So I went to therapy, you know, started working out four times a week. I always see people. Yeah. 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 used to come with me. Yeah. 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 But he used to pick on me. Pick up more weight. <laughs> yeah, and then I was dealing in the gym too. And I, I learned, you know, just in that whole process, um, you know, I learned a lot. But most of all, you know, you learn about yourself. You know, you know what things may take you off track, or what things you do love, what things you don't like, or what patterns that you've been doing since you might have been 17, 18 years yeah. old, or what things yeah. may still bother you deep down. So yeah, this what year caused was, that? What caused what, what caused it? Now you reflecting and like going into like this cathartic like so for me, you state. know, like when well, I guess when that depression came, when I started, I'm like, why am I always sad? Like I have more money than I ever had. I've closed a deal for this much, and I'm still not feeling right. And to me, it was like that depression state where I'm constantly negative was like when you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. You know, whether you got a spiritual or not, but just not living in like what you want to do and what you're passionate about. So once I got off that track, then I had two roommates in there, a house hack. The house hack with me didn't work well, but a house <laughs> hack and then I'm bringing in their lifestyle is rubbing off on me. Now I'm smoking every morning, smoking mm. during lunch, smoking before I go to sleep, <laughs> going out on the weekends. And again, once I realized I was continuously being sad, Sure. And in that mind state, I was yeah. like, man, something's got to change. So that's when I was able to, you know, get them out of the house, being there by myself, and, and work through that process. So yeah. that, that's what it all started was just that continuous sadness over me. No matter how much money I made, no matter yeah. how much I ate, drank, whatever, I just didn't feel right inside. So that's what that started that that transition issue. Mm. You know, working out, praying, reading, you know, studying times. You caught it, as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you caught smoking. that and like. Yeah. Turn it around. That's yeah. awesome. And just allowing, you know, God as well to just give me that discipline yeah. and me obedience. So many things I'm like, I want to do or we all want to do, but yeah. sometimes you just have to say no and, and be obedient to, you know, the answers and the downloads you're getting every day because, you know, the answers and the guidance will come, but you have to listen. Yeah. You have to be, yeah. you know, I just try to tell my friends not, you know, try to be sober the next few months, right? Try to clear things up going to the new year, going there with a, with a sober mind where you can really put things together going into the new year. So that's what happened in January, February this year as well. That, no, that's really hard. I'm that's 10 awesome. years older than you. But, like, at 25, I can't imagine, like... Right? Did you mm -hmm. t turn that switch off? Or even thinking to yeah. that dynamic. I mean, it's because just... you're thinking, you're thinking, like, 20 years, 30 years ahead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yeah. you you recognize that if you focus now while you have the opportunity... Because, like you said, you're making more money than you ever have before. Like... The opportunities are there, and like you can go sideways real fast. Mm -hmm. Very fast. Yeah, and lose potentially what you have, but instead you decided to like. Right. Yeah. You know, right. Shift. Right. Right. And the culture as well, right? You know, the culture for you know people that you know me as a you know African American black man is a lot of different moving parts within our culture that you know is kind of negative. So, and you know that that's what made me realize that as well that I wanted to change and, and you know you know show the world something different, right? Um, you know, not, you know, sell drugs or be an athlete and show a real business and entrepreneurship and, yeah, stuff, yeah, and yeah. lead in that field. And of course, you know, I, I know, you know, everyone here is either married or planning to get married. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not able to work on those problems. It's going to come up in your marriage. You yeah. know, you want to raise a family where For your sure. kids are not with you, right? So I knew that I had to tackle those issues early on or it's just going to be a never ending cycle and I'll blame everyone else for everyone. So for everything that's going on. So that was that, that accountability part. Where, where, where are you getting this mentorship from? Cause like this is it's not, it's beyond business. Yeah, like that is. And you oh, need 100%. that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Where do you, is that is that a family thing? Like, are you getting it from family, no, or, no. or is it still like just the circle that you're in, the other business partners Man. that you're like? Um, like now, I would say the mentorship. I guess for the mindset, I don't really have much mentorship there. Um, yeah, it just comes from I don't know. You know, you know, tapping in with God, tapping in with yourself. You know, getting into that survivory state, and yeah. um, yeah, I guess to answer that question, I was gonna say everything you're talking about is exactly what you read from these mentors and from very successful entrepreneurs. Yeah. That's what they talk about. Mm -hmm. Is you really have to clear it down and don't put any negative <laughs> in your head and just drill down on what you're good yeah. at. And yeah. The belief side too, because it's very hard for people on the other side now even to yeah. think of the amount of businesses or doors or real estate and that's like always the hardest challenging part is when people aren't where they want to be at and like again i said earlier willing themselves into that existence mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's, it's tough and changing is hard and mm -hmm. people yeah. want to see that change yes. you're going to change right um and it's very very challenging but again 
um, not really much family, of course. I would say they, you know, raised me right. Um, but it's just you know, when you talk, like how bad you really want it. Yeah. Kind of comes down to like, do you really bad want this lifestyle? Or no? agree, right? Yeah, how bad do you really want it? <laughs> and what do you want to give up yeah. to get that? Right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. how I think about it. And I have affirmations as well. I read, yeah. you know, every quarter, you know, work on the 12 month year. Uh, it was a really yeah. good book I read that I think helped with that success timeline as well. Um, mm -hmm. Is looking like, man, December 31st, 2022, we need to be at X cash flow, X active income, X cash on hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. X deals in escrow by December 31st. And then when December 31st comes around, January, March 31st, where are we at? Yeah. yeah. And everything, whether it's working out, reading, praying, meditate, church time, family time. Yeah. In, in so you break out months. quarters too. You, you also EOS, like KPIs. Yeah. You, you and do them all. all areas of life. All areas yeah. of life. Yeah. And see, that's the problem is a lot of people think it's only business related. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not just business related. It's action related. It's... Right. Personal mindset, health, mindset, family, family. yeah, all I mean, of that. Like, it's all kind of conjoined. I think mindset's more important than business, actually, because yeah. I think having the confidence in your mind is more important than knowing how. If you have the confidence, it's pretty easy to convince anyone, or pretty yeah. easy to tell yourself to learn how to do things. You'll, you're yeah. more acceptable to learn, I think. That's why I listen to a lot of, I think podcasts, like the self-development podcasts are crucial. Mm -hmm. I, li I try to listen to those as like, yeah. I, almost every day, yeah, you know, like Ed Milet, Tom Billy, yeah, and all yeah, them, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it just puts like just good positive thoughts and gets you kind of pumped for it, for life in general. That, that's just yeah. that too, and it like it gives you that mentorship that like you're saying, like where you get the guidance from. You can say, hey, well, I, I may not pay for Ed's fifty grand one on one coaching, <laughs> but I'm on his online platforms where mm -hmm. I'm getting that coaching and that mentorship. Yeah. 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 As now, well. if you were to suggest someone that's going through problems or mental issues and stuff like that, where would you su suggest them going to to get kind of in the same mindset as you are? Wow. Like, yeah, just what you listen to. Another what you another twenty five year old who's yeah, you know, because there's a lot of twenty five year olds yeah. that are this out way. of college and like have a job and it's they feel like it's a dead end job and they're just like I'm just bumbling around yeah. and they're not sure of who they are or what they want out of life or where they're the direction of their life yeah. is going. Yeah. And like you're you're the opposite. Yeah, you got it you got it set up. Yeah. Right? And obviously there's a lot of discovery where you're trying yeah, to figure out exactly who you are. But I mean all you're doing is just sharpening the pencil. Yeah, like sure. you're going in a direction yep. and if yeah. you continue in that trajectory I mean, you'll be for by the time you're our age. Oh yeah, you're, you're gonna, gonna be multi-million. Like yeah. you'll be yeah. Uh, us. So yeah. you'll continue, but there's a lot of kids and male, female, whatever that are out there that yeah don't. Right? I've like told they you don't. that since since I yeah, met no, him, sure, I've told him sure. that every day since I met him that you were gonna be way farther than I ever mm -hmm. am for sure, for at sure. my age. No, yeah. I think um, I'll say you know for any 25 year old out there, you know 25 that mid 20s is a, is a very dangerous age, yeah. right? Because yeah. you know you're not in high school anymore, you're not in college anymore, you've been out of college for about two three years now, so now you're actively working. And I think my biggest advice on that's in that stage is I understand if you have a lot of great past memories, you have a lot of great high school college memories, younger memories, friends memories. And you may stay in that past, maybe past girlfriends that you might have loved or just a lot of stuff in the past that may really be holding you down mentally and maybe coming up in different habits in the morning time or just things that hit your brain. I would say my biggest tip is to start getting excited for the future you. Start getting excited for your present you right now and what you're building towards. I think that's the biggest thing I would yeah. say now, being at 25, if they're struggling and not feeling good, you know, a lot of times it could be, you know, things that might have happened in the past that you're still holding on, start getting excited for now. Start getting excited for 2023. Start getting excited for what you want to do two years from now. And that will really get you through those mid-20s and, and not be feeling so, oh, it's got to be done now. Or Because a lot of people at 25, you think, oh, you're going to have a nice car, nice house, maybe a nice girlfriend by then. And if it's not there, you know, you start getting very frustrated and down on yourself. Yeah. Just keep building and, you know, just being transparent as men as well, keeping your health up, right? Because... You know, 25 to 27, if you can build a solid foundation, you know, for your family and your health, then you'll be good, better off 20, 30 years from now, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of yeah. pressures is coming from people feeling like their prime should be now, or I should have it now, I should have that car now, because maybe yep. the social setting or the opposite sex mm -hmm. may, you know, be yes. where they're like, I'm ready now. They're a lot more mature, yeah. so you're like, oh, sure. I'm trying to keep up with where you're at, <laughs> and you may not be there yet. So taking that time to mature through these mid-20s, is very very important and again just get excited for now now and the future yeah. is should be a way all your excitement is at and what you're happy about and start feeling happy for things that may not even be here yet yeah yeah well. so to really enjoying the the journey yeah, and, and the perspective yeah. journey because like 
I'm sure that if you really wanted to, you could go out and buy a really nice car right now. Oh, no. But <laughs> look at it every week. <laughs> but, but I also feel like just from having a conversation with you and knowing you for a, a few years, like you'd get that car and be like, okay, what's next? Right? It wouldn't and do it. it. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't do it. And it's because you, you, that's not what satisfies you necessarily. It's the chase. It's the hunger. It's the, it's the process, right. right? That really feeds you. And I think that that's where a lot of people get it missing is that like when you were younger, when you were in college, you were looking forward to your 25s, your 30s, and you were like, when I have this, mm. I'll be happy. And it's mm. more like, yeah. it's more the process, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, and sure. doing what you like, what you prefer, and not necessarily just like, that end goal. Sure, you can have a, a shitty job and make six figures and have the nice car and, and, and the nice wife and maybe a kid, but like that might not be a life that you're necessarily like happy with. Right. There's other ways to make more money than that and make, you know, and be and be much happier. Right, right. And they have to be very careful what direction they go because some people may, you know, personally get into being a landlord and say, this is not for me. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 20, 30, I, it's just not for me. Liquidate it all. I'll just find another way to move my money. I'd rather just lend. So mm-hmm. that's another thing that's so important with that self-discovery. Sure. It's because then that will correlate to what you end up doing with yeah. your time and building that momentum and making sure that it's what you really, really want. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and what I mean, comes with that? And you learn that through like making the mistakes, right? Yeah, because like yeah. you wouldn't mistakes. know that you're not a good landlord until you become a landlord, right? Right, right, right. you know. Right. <laughs> and I think we've all yeah. learned through bumbling around and just trying stuff out and making yeah. mistakes. And sometimes it costs money. Sometimes it costs time. Sometimes it costs whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you, you it's weird because like you have to risk something to figure out more of who you are right. and what you really want to do right. five years from now. Because right. when you're in your 30s, when you're in your 30s, when you're, I mean, you're closer to my age, but like yeah. <laughs> 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 in five years, right. yeah. we'll all be in a much better place because we were willing to put up the money, the 5000 yeah. 10000 for mentorship, mm-hmm. or we'll, or and we're also willing to risk yes. the loss of, I'm going to buy this one house and I'm going to try this new thing out mm-hmm. like, the mental health thing or whatever. Yeah. What if it flails and it flops? Then you got to turn into a regular rental, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like you learn a lot during that process, and like that's our way of paying tuition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. And then, that's, you, and then you gotta know. That's the one thing I have seen with success. They know, like, hey, I want to buy apartments. Or, hey, I know I want to be able. Like that is hard yeah. when you're 25. Like you got to start figuring out, like, what do I really want? Because mm-hmm. everyone I see that's successful, they knew they wanted that one thing they got. That's what they wanted, no matter if it took 20 years, 30 yeah. years, 40 years. They wanted to develop. They wanted yeah. to build buildings in Richmond. That's what they wanted to do, no matter how much it took to get there. So that's another part too. Like what yeah. you're saying is knowing what you really want. Yeah, and sometimes you need to figure it out. You need to make say, the mistakes. Sometimes you aren't going to know what you yeah. really, right. really want. Even at my age, I don't know what I really, really want. Right. Like, yeah. it's not that one thing that I actually sure. really want. Yeah. And it changes. And every it changes. Day. It does change. 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 So, cool. yeah. And at 25, you're so young, you get to change so many more times. Right. So, I mean, yeah. even though we're young Careful. too, but still, yeah, when you're yeah. 33 years old, you're like, man, like these 25 year olds are doing this. I won't even close to that at 25. Yeah. Like, where you're at at 25, I won't even close to. And then the maturity level of a 33-year-old, like, I know you guys look at me from the young, I look at it, you guys older with wisdom. A 33-year-old man, like, in business and mindset and your thoughts and the way you guys are moving with your money and your investments is on a whole other level than a 25-year-old that might have made his first few six figures. So I look at that as well as you guys being older that you guys, you know, as you matriculate that, these are new years, these are new opportunities. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, everyone going to keep your health going. This is your prime right now. Yeah, it, it is different. We we do move slightly because we have a family. Yeah. Both of you guys don't, right? right? Right. And it's just like the way that we think about what the next six months, what the next year, what yeah. the next five years are going to look like. It's very different because like we have to plan out for our family. Like yeah. we both we do got, it full time. We got for two our kids. Family. Yeah, we both have two yeah. kids, and both of our wives <laughs> don't well, work. Our or they work for us. Our business, but like still, it's very different yeah. than like yeah. you know. Like, if you go flat, flat broke, you can do ramen noodles. Like, you'll be fine. You move in one of your rentals and it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Rooms out, we go. yeah. But it is. You start You start thinking and moving very differently in business. And to uh, me, you guys are, you know, achieving the highest level of achievement on earth. I mean, what is the biggest achievement for someone out here? Is it the most money? Is it... No, it's to really raise a family and to whatever you put into them to continue the legacy. So that is, like, the highest level of achievement to me for a man or just anyone on earth. 
it is to have a family and to, to build your family. So work out your yeah. I know it's stressful, but it's definitely worth it. What what uh where are you trying to be in five years? Where where yeah. where are you at thirty? Where, where because like where? five <laughs> years ago, you were in school. You were yeah. you had just started doing your first deal. You were pouring money back into yourself, and you were just getting off the ground. Um, and now you're a completely different person. Right. Um, and I'm sure you've reflected because you you're very introspective. So like, I'm sure you kind of see where you're at, what's worked so far, what you like, what you don't like. But then there's also shiny things that you possibly would like to for do sure, in five sure. years. So for what does sure. that what does that look like for Corey? Man, uh, five years and, and like you said, you know, I've definitely put some thought into it. Um, and again, when you answer that question, like I said, you gotta start thinking about what you're really good at, and what you like yeah. to do. I would say before in the past, I would say five years from now, I want to be financially free, cash flow on doors. I don't want to worry about work at all. Yeah, my bills are well paid for. But I would say now, you know, five years from now, I would like to, you know, being able to buy apartment buildings being able to lead more people in the business world in terms of like sales. So, you know, have a sales team that's, you know, constantly helping sellers and buyers and being able to own apartment buildings to be able to house more, more people, to be honest. You know, I love housing my 10, 12 tenants, but I would love to house hundreds of people yeah. to be responsible for their well-being and making sure that they're getting quality living. So I would say five years from now, owning apartments, you know, having a team, not being a solo entrepreneur, just living, being selfish, but having that team and creating other leaders that I'm able to impact and help them with their family as well. So that's, yeah. that's what I see myself. So, yeah. I was going to say, do you think you would ever want to just retire and not work? Um, probably. I, I thought that mindset, I think that mindset got me through those first doors because that's all you dream of. You <laughs> buy rentals at first. Like, oh, gonna... um, but yeah, eventually, yeah. Um, but I would say more maybe like in my older like 40s and 50s because mm -hmm. now that would be a disservice. That would be a disservice yeah. to contractors that we work with. That would be a disservice to the tenants that need our housing. That's a disservice to a lot of people. Do you think you retired. could do that, though? Yeah. Do you I, think I, I think you could. I think I could. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn up. No, I, I think you get anxious. It's all work. You can stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, because if you had a team, out. if you had a team that, like, took care of all that for you and yeah. was still growing your legacy, is still growing right. for you, uh, because, it, and I think you say this because, like, Eventually, you get to the point where you're you're working in your business, which right. I feel like most of us yeah, still, still are, sure. right? And then eventually, you try to graduate into working uh, on your business, yeah. right? Where you just kind of like sitting back, and I'm yeah. I'm like actively really trying to work on that now. Right. And then eventually, you just want to own your business, work. right? Yeah. And yeah. you just like sit back, and that doesn't mean that you don't work. It just means that you can now venture out to do something completely different, or the same thing, but start it from yeah. scratch, yeah. Um, which is where I think you were trying to go with yeah. it. Like, I would say, yeah, there's a point there. I could see my life, wake up, work out, you know, spend time with my family, make a few calls here and there, situate the businesses, mm -hmm. coach a few people on the side. So for me, retirement would look like probably just education. And being yeah. able to maybe help other people buy into deals and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I think what did Mr. Corey do for a living? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I influence them to yeah. be better themselves. Yeah. Do so, better yeah. by yeah. real estate. Well, I think the true test is if you could go on vacation out of the country for three months with, with, your, yes. with like, I guess, your significant other right. your family. Right. Then you reach true, like, okay, I don't need to work. But if you're getting anxious on a three month, which is a long time, I couldn't do that. Oh, yeah. Three yeah, months. Yeah, it's really long. That's actually one of my dreams. I wouldn't know what to do that is travel for six months and leave America and just travel. Yeah, which, yeah, is, which is sweet. My, yeah. And if you get to that level, then I think you can, you can, for, for, because for me, if I go on vacation for too long, I'm just like, I need to get back. I want to go back to work. It, yeah. It's not that I need to, I want to. Right. I want to go back because I feel like that's, that's where my purpose is. Yeah. yeah, everything stops. If you're out of town for six months, everything stops yeah. other than your rentals. Yeah, your rentals yeah. are the only thing that keep you going yeah. for six months. Other than that, no one else is going out and finding me a flip. Or but a, even if you had that money, like what if what like if, if you, you had that, your cash yeah, flow? Yeah, you, you had that cash flow. Oh, I'm out. Like yeah. that's you're, right. You're ready. I would. Yeah, I would be too. Now, would I get anxious three weeks in? Absolutely, but I feel like it's I don't know. You you have to get past that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you would just have to get past that. I just feel like, you, well, yes. for me, I, if, I wouldn't feel valuable to society if I was Agreed. just sitting on a, on a beach for three months. Now that's now. In 20 years from yeah, now. Yeah, it might change. It might change, yeah, yeah. Because I know in 20 years from now, that would change for me. Yeah. I don't want to do this forever. I yeah. want to be able to kind of relax and sit back. Same, and same here. Same when I'm 50, 60 years old, I look at some of the entrepreneurs that I know that are 50, 60, 
they don't do a whole lot of working in their business anymore. Mm. They're out and going on vacation right. once a month, really. Yeah. A week out of every month. But they are still there. working on that or taking calls and stuff. Usually and they do. They take, and I'm yeah. not saying I would want to go away for six months and not take a phone call. Yeah. I would take a few phone calls. I mean, yeah, we'll if you worked in two hours a day while your kids were sleeping or taking a nap or something, yeah. why would that matter? Yeah. yeah. A few calls here and there. A few Zoom calls as well. Yeah. But eventually, don't you want it to end completely? Uh, I, Other than looking forward, I I don't think I will, but maybe it'll change. Yeah. I don't think I want it to. I still would want to, even if I was on vacation, I could do that and just take calls. But yeah. if that were to end, like where I'm just like just on vacation, just, it'll feel weird. It'll feel really weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, th- I think I would pro- personally create something else. Yes. I would just, like, I, like, I, I wouldn't be able to stop. Something to keep the mind still working. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's some fun in that, right? Like, yeah. the yeah. fun is in, like, figuring out the problems of the right. world and figuring out a way to monetize it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a reason why Bill Gates, Elon Musk, all these people are constantly creating businesses because they can't stop. Yeah. yeah. They create yeah. it, and then it gets to a certain point, and then it runs itself, and then they're like, all right, well, let me go create this. Yeah. Well, I think if they stop, stop, too, they get depressed. They, they start, do. They start yeah. Yeah. depressed. It's just a, yeah. Yeah. It's an just, entrepreneur. Their mind's running so fast that if they just relax, it's like, eh, I need to do something. Yeah. 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 So I have a question for you guys. What's more important in real estate, the cash when you're buying rentals, cash flow or... Um, I mean, appreciation. Cash on, I know what you say, people say appreciate, but what's more important, cash flow or cash on hand for you guys? Would you say you care more about how much your cash flow is, or would you care more about how much cash you actually have and how much you're actually making? For me, I would say cash flow is more cash important to me than what I actually have. Because if I have a whole lot of cash, then I feel like I'm doing a disservice because it should be <laughs> buying more, is what it should be. What do you mean doing. cash on? So, like, like reserves? Is that right? Like, have like, like, like what, 300 reserves, grand in yeah. savings? Yeah. Or, yeah. or have, you know. Well, or cat, like, would you rather have, let's say, three, four hundred thousand saved, and you you know, do a little bit of active income, yeah. or would you rather have a, a large passive income, but your cash on hand is is um, like 20, 30, 40 grand, but your cash is heavy. So for me, I, it would depend on where I think the market's going short term in the next one to two years. Yeah. If it's if I think it's going to plateau or go down, I'll probably want more cash on the side. If I think we're in like start of a new era of a bull market, maybe like a five, eight year bull market, mm-hmm. I want more cash flow and just keep the point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I could be wrong, of course, people could be wrong on what they think is going to happen. So, I mean, no answer is, you know, solid, but it's basically what I think would happen, what I think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think right now it'd be cash on. Yeah, hand. right now for me, right now it'd be cash, cash on cash. cash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, unless. Unless you can cash flow and obviously leave less money or no money mm-hmm. in there, yeah. If there's a cash, because there has to be a there has to be a, a a break even point where the cash on cash return is still worth it though. Yeah. Right. And from I mean from what you have a percentage. Well, in yeah. So I don't know. Just oversimplified. If you put in twenty thousand dollars or yeah. left twenty in it, but you got out in cash net flow. cash flow ten grand and it was at fifty percent. Yeah. Does, does that make it worthwhile at some point? Because there is a threshold. Yeah. There is. Yeah, yeah for sure there's a threshold. They kind of go hand in hand, though, because if you have 15, 20 grand a month coming in from cash flow, mm-hmm. aren't you automatically going to have cash reserves? Because there's no, I mean, unless you you're really you dumb and you're, unless you're really dumb and you're spending all of that money. So I, get I, the, I feel like you're going to have both. Yeah. I think your question comes down to the root of should you hold a property? Kind of maybe the situation you're in, or flip it. <laughs> kind of, right. So it would also be a viewer because when you're buying these rentals, you're like, oh, well, what's more important, <laughs> tying up 20, 30 in here, or yeah. is the cash flow more important? Mm-hmm. These are questions I've asked myself as I went through this process. The other variable for me, at least, would be um, uh, appreciation. Yeah, agreed. Right? Like, where is it at? I, it, yeah. th- well, that's, that, market, that, that's to where we said, or if you think there's a bull, bull run, you'll start. The point. No, like right. even right, like even right now, when we're gonna be seeing it, be seeing a dip for who yeah. knows how long, um, I'd probably be more open to leaving money in it right now. Correct. Right now, even right, right now, even right now, you even right now, right now if it's in an appreciating yeah. neighborhood oh, so area, if okay. in five years, and if it's it. not, then I I wouldn't. Oh, then so absolutely. Yeah, not. yeah. So that goes back to bull market versus bear. I mean, for the neighborhood specific though. Bull yeah, bull even if it's bear. ten years out. Yeah, I just mean like. Is there more upside in that neighborhood? Yes. Right. Now or later. Because you, I, the way I'd kind of look at it, or uh, the way I'd frame it is like, sure, I'm leaving 20 in it now. Yep. Can, I, can I eat without 20000 for the next, like, 
two, three, four, five years. Yeah. But like it's gonna be a hundred and fifty in ten, right? Like it's yeah. you won't get that kind of return because you're at that point dollar cost averaging where it's like twenty now and then worth one hundred and fifty later. How many times did that twenty thousand flip mm -hmm. over? Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting like, uh, I mean I can't even do the math like a seven per, like a seven hundred percent return right. on your money. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's like, would you do that? good market or bad market i think most people would mm -hmm. if they saw the future you don't but that's why i would I choose like the appreciating market and i yeah. would be more likely to do it there than, wow. than not yeah. Wow. yeah that was game and also another point on that would be tax well, taxes is something to consider because you get a write off the depreciation interest expense and all that sure. so if you're making yeah. a lot of active income that year i might lean towards holding it just so i can get some more depreciation write-offs yeah. first mm -hmm. on my yeah because you're all that active money can lean yeah. in on yeah. on your asset right. and, you, and you get more depreciation because yeah, right. of that one and especially if it's i don't know i don't know depending on how big the duplex is or if you have more multifamily, i would i would at that point depending on your active income cost uh cost segregate like i would start to yeah. break everything out i haven't done that because i feel like it's not worth it for me yeah, yeah you get a lot of appreciation that way exactly yeah. you yeah. could get a yeah. and then when you guys started building your portfolio when did you start like paying yourself was it a certain number like, okay well if i hit this number then i'll start paying myself this rental income or like what's your mindset with the actual rental income like, i think we all have different answers there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Way for, Carlos? yeah. uh <laughs> so for me this so I've been married even before I like went in full time and all that. So like my my wife had a good good paying job where we could pay everything food, right. private school for the girls, like mortgage, everything could be paid for my wife's salary. So I was all all any and all monies were poured right back into uh, building a, a portfolio. Right. Um, and then I started flipping some, and it would just continue to feed into it. But once she left her job. Um, what we ended up doing is we kind of pay ourselves off of that active income. We don't necessarily pay ourselves off of the passive. The passive, all of our rental stuff, it goes right and it stays all and just compounds, compounds. And when it gets to a certain point, we're like, okay, now there's an extra, so we'll have a cap and then anything above that will continue to save. And then we're like, okay, well, let's just rip 25, 30,000 off the top. And then now we can put money towards another rental or whatever. Like if we have to leave money in that house then we can use it from there type of thing. Um, but we pay ourselves essentially like minimum wage off of like our active income. Wow. It's, it, yeah. we pay ourselves very Do you pay yourself off your refinancing jobs? No, 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 no. Not necessarily, I mean, I, I guess I am pull, for, well, I guess for, so for me, I'm just transfer when I need the money, I would just transfer it. So I guess I'm not paying myself directly off those refinance, but some of that money might come from a refinance. But it's only when I my I see my personal getting low that I just transfer it as an owner's equity portion. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, my tax accountant um, gives me W two for the minimum I should pay because you're paying the highest taxes on that yeah. on the salary you give yourself, which is mm -hmm. why people try and sandbag their salary as much as possible, but still make it look like it's reliable in case they get audited, wow. like it's an okay salary. Because you have to pay the yeah, self-employment. A reasonable yeah. amount for yeah. your profession. Yeah. yeah, because you got to pay the unemployment tax, Social Security tax, and all that, and match that with your W-2 salary. But if yeah. it's just profits of the company, it just goes to your personal tax return, mm. and you just pay the ordinary tax income, if that makes sense. So for me, I just take it out in owner's equity if I need it. Um, I don't have that many. Well, until recently, I was living in an Airbnb, so... I actually didn't have a mortgage because yeah. they were paying a mortgage and actually plus like a couple grand. Yeah. Now I moved out of that, so oh, okay. uh, I'm, I'm, I, have a, I have a mortgage now. It's not that big, but uh, I'm renting out the one I lived in, so that I'm kind of covered what I would yeah. be paying. So I mean, my expenses aren't high. I got used cars, no car payments, no payments at all except my personal house. So yeah, okay. yeah. I would say for me, I pay my. Up until next year, my goal for next year, my goal all the way through this point was to stack up enough cash from my passive income to put into reserves for my passive income. Mm -hmm. So therefore I wanted, like Dylan said, eight months of mm -hmm. passive income reserves for mortgages, expenses, vacancies, all of that. 
and now I finally got to that. So come January 1, I'm actually planning on paying all my bills with my passive income. Mm -hmm. Beforehand, I used to pay it through my active income. Right, I pay right, myself right. and just pay the bills and all that. I didn't really take a salary. I would pay my wife a little bit just because she was used to getting a salary. So mm -hmm. for her, that was important to still right. feel like she was getting that salary. I didn't need that. Mm -hmm. So I just basically I live off of the business's active income because I don't buy a whole lot but what little I did buy if I needed some shoes to do something or my shoes were starting to get holes in them then I'm going and buying it out the business account because I needed boots for the for the job site or something like that so I needed more hey dudes yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it, it, it's weird because like you got you got a three completely different answers and it just really yeah. depends on your strategy. I mean, mm -hmm. some of us are, only have LLCs and are all pass throughs, and yeah. that gets up taxed completely different than, mm -hmm. differently than like somebody who has an S corp. And because they have an S corp, they get a salary, and then nothing really like you get taxed significantly less in the S corp, and you really only get heavily taxed yes. on like your salary. So it depends on your strategy right. and what you're what you're looking at as like a long term thing. So like. I don't know. It, it really depends on yes. your personal like yes. portfolio, how much cash we have coming in, like all of that is really dependent. Is, so is, you're is. having that. I mean, you should. I don't know if you are, are already having conversations uh, constantly with your accountant. Yeah, for sure. We spoke like for an hour the other day about this duplex, but that was just a big question because when people are getting into rentals, you know, you don't you don't think about those things like okay, well, when do I actually pay myself this or should I pay myself this as soon as I get two thousand or if I get five or twelve or what yeah. number is that? Yeah. And how are other professionals that have that portfolio? What are they doing and how are they paying themselves? Because you do all the work, the cash flow's there, and again, either you look at it as something that just compounds and like another savings, like yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. And because it does get bigger, I'm never like when I finally got my doors turned over, I'm like, oh man, this thing is. Yeah. I mean, it's still, oh, you look yeah. and you're like, oh shit, I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. maybe I should focus on that. Yeah. But it is a scarcity thing, I think. Um, like, w the money is coming in for your rentals, and you're like, you, you. I, I don't want to tap into like, because yeah. yeah, yeah, the, the moment I do, like, a sink is gonna like yeah. crack right. open and leak, and then I gotta send somebody to go yeah. fix right, it. Right. But that's the exact reason I have those reserves, mm. and I can't wait. Come January one, it's gonna be the best feeling that I accomplish that, that, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. actually get to pay for my living expenses. Mm. I'm not gonna use it to pay for anything other than awesome. my living expenses. Yeah. I want it to pay for my mortgage. My truck, my work truck right. payment. Right. I wanted to pay for insurance, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just because I, you work so hard for your cash flow. My right. cash flow. Yeah. yeah. So my cash flow will actually get to pay for my living expenses. And it's crazy because once you hear things like that, you're like, man, I want to just focus on that. And like I tell even newbies, like you just got to be careful. You just double down just on rentals because you know you got to have that cash come in. Gotta have that. Here what Dow just said, I'm like, forget the sales and team. I want to get more rentals. So yeah. I can live where I want to live. I can drive a car that I put yeah. like to drive and yeah. know that it's all paid for yes. and focus on that for another year instead of trying to focus but he, on But he sales. focused on his active yeah, for a while. Yeah, and, then, yeah. 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 and then yeah. went yeah. heavy into rentals. And yeah. too. I yes. really yeah. think yeah. that your passive income should be double or triple your living expenses before you actually use that to pay your living expenses. And that's kind of finally where I am. Yeah. Is It's almost almost triple of my living expenses so i'm not going to use all that passive income all of it's going to come in a third of it's going to pay my living expenses and the other two thirds are going to go back into the savings account because like i mean depending on how you split up your accounts like you should be paying yourself a property management correct you know what i mean like bucks, 200 it's, bucks it's, a property yeah because like yeah i mean sure depending on your lifestyle if you want to get paid five thousand dollars a month i mean yeah. at a hundred dollars per pro like that's Five hundred, like that's a that's, that's a lot of that's a yeah, lot that of money. A lot that's a lot, yeah. Money, yeah. But like, there, it it just depends on how you feel comfortable, like what yeah. what how you want to split that up. Mm -hmm. There's no wrong answer. Well, there probably is. There's no right. Answer. There's no right answer. <laughs> There's, no right answer. <laughs> There's no right answer for every yeah. particular yeah. person. Everyone's yeah. money moves different. Every business yeah. money moves different. So yeah. Yeah. If your living expenses are three grand and you're making ten grand passively. Why does it matter if your passive income pays for that living three thousand dollar living expense? Mm. You got enough to cover the vacancies that as long as you plan had a plan for your worst case scenario. Say three people don't pay next month, is that gonna affect your living expenses? Mm. No, because it's three times higher than your living expenses. Right. So it's right. and you had reserves. It's not like you right. didn't put money in that savings account. Yeah. yeah. So Cause you gotta start thinking about those things, right? Like what like for anyone, okay, I want to live in a nice apartment in the city. Or yeah. I want to get a nice house somewhere. How much is that? And then, okay, well, how much is a decent car? Everything is so expensive now. 
Yep. In normal BMW Benz, it's like $100,000. So you got to <laughs> exactly. put that in there with an okay with money yeah. and actually add up what your ideal lifestyle is to what that cash flow is and then make sure the cash flow is three times that of your yeah. ideal lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's the right, right way, though. I mean, yeah, think about right how way. many people of our age, say old friends, associates, so forth, how many of them are our age and live paycheck to paycheck? What's the difference? Right. So even if you did use all of that cash flow to pay your expenses, you would be just like ninety-seven percent of these people. Except you're gonna get foreclosed. Like, <laughs> exactly. like, we're Except not working. Track, bro. Yeah, now right. you can't play. Now you can't replace exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And think yeah. about yeah. how many people though that are our age. HVAC goes out and they're screwed. They're yeah, putting on a credit, credit card, card yeah. or something, and they're just trying to make do. And now they're two years behind because they just put a five thousand dollars HVAC on the credit card, and now they can't. They don't even save five thousand dollars a month to be able, I mean a year to even pay that off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's crazy, but that's real life. Mm-hmm. If so many yeah, no. I talked about that the other day with a buddy, and there's a lot of people that live like that. I know tons of them. Yeah. They just can't afford a roof leak, can't afford a, can't afford yeah. any catastrophic or not even a catastrophic transmission goes out of their truck and they're yeah. done. They're done. <laughs> it's just, well, I mean, how do you stop that? You know, as a society, stop. Is, should there be a training for like FHA first time home buyers? No. That, so there is actually. As crazy as that is, oh, I sold a house. Is. I helped someone, and they she had to go through a class, and I but I was like two her house and answered all the questions. But it's for a down payment assistance. A down payment yeah, assistance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, are they teaching them? Are they teaching them a roof? A roof yeah. costs five thousand to repair. No, I think it's financial literacy. It's just like be responsible with money. Exactly. Because it's yeah. so hard. To, it's so hard to teach. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't. Cool. So I'm taking a picture. <laughs> oh, oh, that's awesome. See, I know you had to go, but I don't know what time. What time you got to go, bro? at 4.30. But it's around oh, here, though. Okay. It's around here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. Well, do you have any closing remarks? Um, we yeah, for Also, a we could do a different podcast with um, you explain your situation with that uh, duplex, and then we could kind of give our input on what we would do in your situation. Yeah, yeah, we could do so, that. Yeah, or, like I said, I, I don't have the paper on me, but we could write the numbers out right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, we, we have a whiteboard, so we'll do another one. We'll have yeah. two yeah. projects. You got, how long, how long does it take to get there? No, I think it's out here. I have the address. I can look. I okay. need with a realtor. She gets some yeah. deals. Because you just threw a lot of knowledge and a yeah. lot of good yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. That was sweet. All right, so let's, we'll end this thing and then. Yeah. yeah. All, right. all right. Well, first off, any closing remarks or you um, made all a you, bunch bro. of. Yeah. yeah. No, again, you know, being in this room, you know, when you guys are listening to this podcast, these are real real estate investors that have real properties throughout the city. Um, you know, people that are, you know, have a great heart that are serving first, you know, helping the community with rentals, flips, and things of that nature. So, really, for me, I'm just grateful to be here. Again, yeah. I look up to all you guys. You guys all played a part in me wanting to even get a rental. I'm selling you that one little clip that definitely made me want to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is a nice one in the I don't know how to fix this thing. Daryl, you know, coming in and helping me actually do my first flip that I ever did, you know, successfully and actually walking me through that, doing my first rental property together, hopefully we'll buy our first apartment together. And Dylan, you know, always being there, someone that was buying properties in Petersburg and actually building a portfolio there while, yeah. while everyone else or 90% of the people our age down there were partying, hanging out, having fun. But being around someone that was, you know, a few years older, you know, buying doors in Petersburg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Forget about what it, oh, it's a negative or it's not growing or it's not there. This guy right here is actually down there and started his portfolio buying down there. So, you know, you guys have some heavy hitters in the room here and I'm just grateful to be here. Hopefully we all, um, you know, can meet up again and share value and exchange value. And this is a dope podcast and, you know, just really grateful to be here. Yeah, cool. Cool. we appreciate, appreciate it. Man. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate you coming on, Corey. Yeah, um, yeah. Spent, a, spent a lot of wisdom. Where can they find you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. I have one Instagram. This is my real Instagram. <laughs> Listed <laughs> below. Yeah, yeah. below. You won't ask for Bitcoin or anything. <laughs> yeah, <no Bitcoin. laughs> that's it. Yeah, we'll talk about the next one. But uh, it's at the at the real C Vic zero zero. So the real C Vic zero zero. <laughs> And are you yes. taking new students or what's yeah, up with that? Yeah, so I'm open right now to taking new students for one-on-one uh, mentorship, right? Uh, you have pre-recorded videos on wholesaling as well as rental properties. And we'll be able to hop on a call for two to three hours once a week and be able to help you elevate in your, in your journey of real estate investing. All right, cool. That's 25-year-old entrepreneur, yes. Corey Vickers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget that like button. Give it a share. Thanks to Peak Property Management for letting us in here. Thanks for coming, Corey. Yes. And this yes. is a generation... Peace! <laughs> <laughs>